All right, Saga, what are you looking at? Well, something I've been trying to highlight here on the show for months now is how corrupt the higher education system in the U.S. is, why full-scale war really needs to be declared on it. Not only because it's bankrupting unsuspecting college students, but also because its commitment to a pernicious ideology is seeding itself across the higher elite of American society. Perhaps no sector of our economy is more despised and yet more imperative than the law. Thus, the governing bodies of law, the American Bar Association, and more importantly, the law schools themselves, have immense power in how they run their institutions, which will undoubtedly influence one of the top tiers of our economy. So what exactly are the law schools up to these days? Well, if you sadly have been forced to pay attention over the last few years, as I have, I can tell you it's not great. The nation's top legal educators have been embroiled in a project of who can out-crazy each other, from the Yale Law School scandal where they try to effectively force out classmates and professors, for every once in a while trying to have a view not only within the mainstream, to routinely trying to get professors fired for towing the line. But the latest game at an institutional level is the most cynical move of all that the media is giving these schools a total pass on. The nation's top law schools are currently in open revolt against the U.S. News and World Report rankings. Ordinarily, I would cheer this as I've done a whole monologue about why the ranking system sucks and how Ivy League schools like Columbia have gamed it for years. But their deeper motivation for pulling out is sinister. If you listen to them, it sounds very high-minded. Yale Law School was the first to withdraw, and they ranked first in the country for a long time. So why would they pull out? Well, if you listen, again, it just sounds very nice. The U.S. news rankings are profoundly flawed. The dean said its approach fails to advance the legal profession but stands squarely in the way of progress. Harvard echoed a similar sentiment, saying, quote, its approach not only fails to advance the legal profession but stands squarely in the way of progress. Hmm progress. Anytime I hear that from diversity, equity, and inclusion obsessed bureaucrats, I'm going to be very suspicious. And lo and behold, when I dug deeper, I have every right to be. The timing of these decisions happens to come at the exact same moment that the Supreme Court is poised for the first time in history to strike down affirmative action in college admissions, as was evident at the most recent oral arguments in the court. This has left elite schools scrambling, who are wholly committed to a racial, quote, vision of diversity and not one of class whatsoever. Over years, they have evolved fake qualitative metrics that have had the effect of outright discrimination against Asian Americans, Jews, and several others in pursuit of what their racial for the country should be. The Supreme Court decision will be a blow to this type of racism, which is casually accepted by elites, but the latest scheme actually goes hand in glove. The long-term goal of Harvard, Yale, Stanford, and many of these other law schools is to preserve affirmative action in all but name only. As Megan McArdle explains, quote, one way to keep from being held accountable for discriminating against Asians or in favor of underrepresented minorities is to downweight or eliminate objective metrics such as test scores in favor of harder to compare criteria such as essays, interviews, and recommendations. Now, because doing so in admissions would inevitably hurt them in the rankings, which weight heavily towards LSAT scores, they are preemptively pulling out of the rankings so they don't suffer. In many ways, what's happening right now is just a prelude to 2025, when they get their long-held wish of eliminating objective criteria entirely. It is no surprise that at the same time that affirmative action is ending, the American Bar Association just days ago voted to eliminate the requirement that law schools use the LSAT exam. That rule will go into effect likely in 2025 and effectively end any standardized method for comparing applicants. Meaning what? You already know. It will throw admissions purely into the realm of qualitative where law schools won't even really have to pretend anymore to discriminate against Asians and Jews, all in the name of affirmative action. Worse, this is not better for students in any way as even the diversity-obsessed law school deans argued in an open letter to the Bar Association. Doing away with LSAT ends the one last universal quantitative measure of applicants and will likely lead to more people getting admitted who cannot either handle the course load or less likely to pass the bar exam. Why is that a problem? Because currently, average cost of law school is $46,000 a year. At Ivy League, like Harvard, it is 70000 Imagine racking up 150000 in debt to not even reap the rewards of your degree. 
So much of this scheme is exposing that the law schools are committed to preserving affirmative action and they're willing to burn any vestiges of remaining academic credibility that they once had. They are also exposing one of the great lies about the so-called meritocracy. It doesn't have anything to do with merit anymore these days. It has more to do with the social vision of a few select bureaucrats at Ivy League institutions. Overall, I'm of several minds on this one. On the one hand, I abhor the basically legalized racism of affirmative action. On the other hand, I want these major credentialing institutions to lose credibility and burn so we can reimagine our entire higher education system. But in the meantime, while thousands of would-be lawyers are going to suffer, those that make it may incur a lifetime of debt with no payoff, and the only people laughing to the bank are the administrators using their and government money to re-employ themselves. It is a scam, and we all need to wake up to this as soon as possible. You know, it's really interesting, right? Because at first, you're like, oh, screw the rankings. This is great. Hey, guys, ready or not, 2024 is fully upon us now, and Sagar and I have been brainstorming ways that we can really up our game for this critical election. Yeah, we rely on our premium subs to expand our coverage, to add staff, to upgrade the studio. We just want to give you the best independent coverage of this election, which is possible. So if you can help us out, become a premium subscriber today, breakingpoints.com, or the link is down here in the description video. It really means the world to us, and if you like what we're all about, this is the best possible way to keep us 100% independent, working only for you.